now we reach to a stage where we have to install Oracle ASM package. The appliance that I have has already uh, Oracle ASM package installed. And to verify that, I just run this command, rpm minus QA, grip Oracle ASM. So this output means that Oracle ASM has already been installed. However, the Oracle ASM lib package is not there and I have to download and install it. So I will go now through the steps to install Oracle ASM library package. I will use yum utility to do that. After installing the Oracle ASM library package, I have to configure and load the ASM kernel module. Simply copy paste the command in the terminal window. Grid is the account and DBA is the group and then yes and yes for the other two questions. Finally, you have to load the Oracle ASM kernel module and that's it. Oracle ASM library has been installed and configured in the appliance. Now we have to create the ASM disk volumes using fdisk-l we will uh, just list the available disks. As you can see, SDA is the one uh, which has 100 gig gigabyte and this one is used by the system so we're not going to touch it but the other disks are given the uh, devices SDC uh, sorry B C and D B is uh, has 2 GB which will be used as a CRS uh, D and C uh, sorry mm, C and D will be used for the data and FRA now we have to uh, create partitions in those disks we will use if disk utility for that purpose for each of the device files you open you just run the commands n p 1 enter enter and w as simple as that n for creating a new partition p primary partition one is the uh, first sector and then enter enter to answer the questions that will be asked by the if disk utility and then w to write the uh, changes you will do that for the for the three disks B, C and D. So let's start doing that. We'll start with B N P one enter enter and W. You just do the same for the other two disks. To verify that we have to, we can run this command. As you can see, uh, three partitions have been created, SDB1, uh, SDC1, and SDD1.
now we have to create the ASM disks so this command will create the first disks for, for us which is CRS disk 1 you just have to copy and paste the commands from the document So I have created three disks, CR, CRS disk 1, data disk 1, and FRA disk 1. This command will list those disks for us, just to verify what we have done. And I'm going to reboot the appliance. The next stage will be to install Oracle Grid infrastructure software. So as a grid, I'm going to create a directory to install the installation files in it. So I will switch to grid user and create a directory. So it's here. Then using WinSCP, I'm going to uh, copy the installation files to the appliance let me just fix the IP address over here and log in to the appliance using WinSCP I will go to the directory that we have created under grid home directory and then copy the installation files After the copy is finished, you can change the ownership of that folder, or sorry, of that directory. So as root, you run this command. Now we need to run the Xming utility uh, so that we can see the GUI window in our Windows PC. So you just go to the shortcut of Xming and run it. Now, in order for the Xming to work with Putty, you need to do this configuration in Putty uh, utility. You have to go to connection, SSH, and then X11. From there, you make sure that this a uh, checkbox is marked enable x11 forwarding make the x display location local host that's it you don't need to do anything more now in order to test that uh, this xme configuration is working I'm going to use Xclock utility. Uh, however, Xclock is not by default installed in Linux 6, so I'm going to install it using yum utility. Now the Xclock is installed, we can test it. As you can see, Xclock window appears in my uh, Windows PC, which means our Xmain configuration uh, has is successful. However, with the configuration that we have made so far, Xmain will work perfectly for root user, but for grid user or Oracle user, we have to uh, do some uh, little. We have to run some commands in order to let 
Xming work for grid or Oracle user. So first you run this command as root. Then switch to grid user and run this command as grid. XAUTH add XAUTH add and copy paste the output from the earlier command into this new command. So go over there as, I, as, I, as you can see copy and paste and run. That's it. This is necessary for uh, Xming to work for a grid. Every time you want to run a GUI application as a user different than root, than the root, you have to run the same commands, either as grid or as Oracle. Finally, you have to define the display uh, variable. Now let's decompress the installation files. I have decompressed the files, so I don't need them anymore. I will, I'm going to uh, delete them. Then I will go to the grid directory, and from there I will run the installer. In this window, we just have to select the second option, which is install and configure Oracle Grid Infrastructure for a standalone server. Click on Next. Next. Here we have to define the CRS uh, disk. Um, however, the disks don't, uh, don't appear in the list down over there because we have to fix the discovery path. So this is mentioned and documented in the installation document, in the practice document. So if you go to, you click on change discovery path and change the path to dev oracle asm disk star. So the disks Will appear now. Now we have to select as mentioned in the document we have to select the CRS disk from the list so the disk group name will be CRS the redundancy will be external and make sure you select the CRS disk one then next Define the password. Here we just click on next. Nothing needed to be changed, just next, yes. All good, next. Those values are known by the wizard from the variables. That's why they, that's why they are sitting uh, that's why they are set right. Next. Here we need to provide the root password. The wizard has discovered uh, two missing configuration. Uh, which are uh, setting the hard limits and soft limit. We have uh, we should have done this uh, earlier, but uh, it's not a big problem because the wizard can fix this for us. So you can simply click on fix and change, uh, sorry, fix and check again. 
this is mentioned by the way in the document you click on fix and check again button and the wizard will fix everything for us as you can see the changes have been uh, successfully changed by the wizard so if you click on back and check again the errors have been resolved uh, about this warning which uh, complains about the physical memory you don't have to worry about it uh, we will not face any issue with that uh, it complains it should be 4 whereas it, it, uh, the actual size is 3.6 that's fine we can safely ignore this warning you just mark this checkbox ignore all and click on next now we can install the grid infrastructure software in the middle of the installation you will see this word this uh, confirmation message you just click on yes button And finally, uh, you will see this window confirming that the software installation has been done. Now to check the CRS services, you can run this command. And as you can see, the state, the state of the services are stable. now we need to create ASM disk groups for that we will use the utility ASM CA or ASM configuration assistant you click on create the first disk group will be data Redundancy is external data and OK. I'm following the document to perform the steps. So the first disk has been created. Now we have to create the third disk group, which is the FRA. FRA, external, FRA disk, and OK. So we have now, as you can see, we have now three disks, CRS, data, and FRA, and they are all mounted. So that's it for this part. We have successfully installed Oracle Grid Infrastructure and created an ASM uh, instance attached to three disks, CRS, Data, and FRA. So we are ready now to install the Oracle Database software and create a new database.